Good morning guys or good afternoon whether you're joining me from the present or the future welcome back to another future fight vanguard video Happy New Year guys. Um, I know I've been gone for a while, but I've had a lot of stuff going on between catching the flu um, And being sick for a really long time I think the last time I recorded a video was literally before I went to California So now this week I'm going to be on my way to the world championships in Japan um, on Thursday um, so yeah, that will be really, really awesome. Um, if you guys see me there, be sure to come say hello. But yeah, I've had a lot of stuff going on, like the flu, and you know, getting a new computer, having to wipe my old computer, and download all the new information to the new computer, and figure out all my streaming settings and all that interesting, fun stuff. But we're back now. It's a new year. Uh, I won't say new year, new me, but new year, um, new Vanguard content. How about that? Um, so we're going to get right into the video here. If you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell button so that you don't have to miss a single video going forward. Don't forget to like the video if you like it and share the video with your friends or family or your dog if you love it. Um, and be sure to check out my anime channel down below in the description if you guys are interested in anime and video games at Let's Plays Animes. And be sure to check out my sponsor, Team Vision. Uh, we have a lot of cool um, content on the site, such as decklist strategies, stuff like that. And if you're interested in becoming a premium member of this channel, be sure to check out the join button next to the subscribe button down below for your perks. Uh, but with that being said, let's get right into the video. So today we're going to be talking about um, an interesting deck. Um, today's deck is Pale Moon uh, for Phantasmal Seed Re uh, Restoration, uh, the BT06. Uh, but instead of doing Luke here, I feel like since uh, we've passed the time where the deck is fresh, um, basically I wanted to go a different route and kind of show a different deck that maybe not a lot of people know about, uh, which is Nightmare Dolls. Inside of EB06, uh, this deck is a heavy rush variant, um, high attack, um, high kill potential deck. Um, it also has very, like, it's very fragile, so it's very glass cannon, uh, can be sometimes, just because of the way that the deck works, but if you get your combos off, or if you push your opponent to 5 damage and then do the combo, it can be very, very, very difficult for your opponent to survive, uh, just because of the number of attacks and restands of the Vanguard. Um, so let's get right into the deck list here. So, we're starting off with our grade 3s, we have 4 Nightmare Doll Carol. Um, Carol has two Vanguard abilities. The first one is when placed on Vanguard Circle, look at the top five cards of your deck and put a card from among them into the soul and shuffle your deck. And then if you put a grade three Workroid into your soul, uh, you can call that card to Rearguard Circle. Now normally, obviously your only grade three uh, Workroids in, the, in this deck are Carol and Alice themselves. So if you happen to place a Carol off of a Carol before you call it out, I would definitely check your soul to see if you have a second Carol in there first. If you already have a Carol in your soul and you're on Carol, then I would suggest calling the Carol that you uh, just soul charged to rear guard circle. Then you guys will see what I'm talking about because for the restand ability, for you to keep restanding on Carol, you need to have a Carol in your soul. So this is a good way to get Carol into your soul. And then also, if it, you hit Alice, you're able to just call it out and that sets up your whole setup for the restand. Um, its secondary ability is when your grade three rear guard is put into the soul. Um, counter blast one and discard two cards from your hand. Ride a work roid from your soulless stand, and then that unit gets minus one drive until the end of the turn. So you do not have to put a grade three work roid into soul with this card. So you can put um, com uh, com uh, Comicality uh, Chimera. We'll just call it Chimera. You just have to put Chimera in the soul to trigger its ability. However, you do have to uh, re-ride a work roid from your soul. Um, so you either will ride Carol or Alice, or you're going to have to go down to like grade two or grade one, like riding Jumping Joe or riding Aaron, which is ideally not what you want to do. You just want to make sure that you have a three to ride because you're going to get an Excel two marker and um, everything's going to balance itself out and it'll be even while being pressure on your opponent. So very, very good. Moving on to our next grade three, we have four Nightmare Doll Alice. Um, it has a Vanguard and a Rearguard ability separately. The, when uh, placed on Vanguard Circle, call it to one work Workroid from your soul to Rearguard Circle, and that unit gets plus 5,000 power. Obviously, really helps when you're going into uh, when you have no more Counterblast to restand, and you're just going into Alice as your last uh, reride off of Carol. And then when it's placed, obviously you can call Workroid from your soul to Rearguard Circle, and it can really help out. Um, and then its rearguard ability um, is at the end of the battle that it attacked, counter boss one, soul boss one, put this unit into your soul, and then call a card other than this card, or sorry, other than grade three from your soul to rearguard circle. So obviously this card triggles, uh, triggers Carol's ability to be able to restand, um, and then also it can call itself out, but also you don't have to call anything out. 
Um, you can counterbalance one soul blossom and put this card in the soul. And if there's only grade threes in your soul, you cannot call. So you just fulfill the condition of moving the grade three to soul, but you do not call anything. Uh, moving on to our last grade three in the deck. Uh, for a total of 12, we run four Chimera. Uh, Chimera has a rearguard ability only, and it says when it attacks, Soul Blast 1 and put another rearguard into your soul. This unit gets plus 5,000 power to the end of the battle, and if you have not countercharged this turn, then you may countercharge 1. So basically, uh, what this card means for you is a lot of great things because this deck is very counterblast heavy. So not only does it bring a way to countercharge into your deck, it also allows you a way to move a grade 3 into your soul um, if you did not have a previous way to do so, such as Alice. Moving on to our grade 2s. We have four Jumping Jill, three Amaranth Beast Tamer, and three Nightmare Doll Aaron uh, for a total of 10 grade twos. Um, so, Jumping Jill has an ability that says on rear guard when it's placed from soul, uh, put one rear guard into your soul, um, and then you can call a card other than grade two from your soul to the rear guard in the back row. So, Jumping Jill helps for a variety of purposes. Obviously, it can get you a booster um, off of a card that already attacked. You can also, it uh, allows you to have a way to place a grade 3 in a soul. Um, you can also call out a grade 3 as long as you call it to the back row, setting up for stuff like Amaranth or um, Chimera to allow you an extra restand or an extra attack. So it can be very, very good. Um, then we have 3 Amaranth, like I said before. It has a Vanguard or Rearguard ability that says when it attacks a Vanguard, put one of your other Rearguards into the soul and this unit gets plus 3,000 power. Obviously able to hit um, when you ride it and you're going second against force. It is able to hit past 10k, so obviously your ideal vanguard ride. Um, you can attack with a rearguard, then attack with this, shove that rearguard in so that the rearguard doesn't have to die or be in danger, and then you can also uh, hit that threshold of being past 10. Then we have three Nightmare Doll Aaron, um, another card that yet again helps us fulfill the condition of being able to put a grade three in the soul. However, it can only target Warcroids with its skill, so you cannot move like Chimera in or anything like that like you can with Amaranth or Jumping Jill, so be careful about that. But Aaron's skill is when it attacks Counterboss 1, put another Warcroid from Rearguard into soul, you draw a card and this card gets plus 10,000 power. So makes itself a pretty good beater, um, also gives you card advantage in the form of a draw. Moving on to our grade ones, we have 11 grade ones. Um, we have four Nightmare Doll Beverly. Uh, Beverly's skill is when your other work roid is placed in the same column as this unit, that unit gets plus 5,000 power. So Beverly can be really good behind Vanguard Circle because it will make every single one of your cards that comes out 17 um, over and over and over. When you re-ride Carol, re-ride Alice, there'll be 17k if Beverly's there because they're being placed in the same column. Um, that allows you to hit force uh, really accurately. Um, and if you're playing against Excel and Protect, you don't really have to worry about it, but it is a number change, changing it to 17 instead of 12. Then we have four Purple Trapezes. Uh, the reason that we have four Purple Trapezes in the deck is because it works really, really well with Amaranth or Jumping Jill, uh, just to be able to let us call out a grade three that maybe is in our soul that we can't reach, uh, whether that be Chimera or Alice, you know, um, grade threes that we want on our rearguard circle to set up for our good plays. Um, so when it's put in this hole from rear guard, you can soul blast a purple trapezist and call any card from your soul to rear guard circle. So obviously very, very good card allows you to toolbox your soul for that purpose. Um, then we run three silver thorn assistant Irina. We don't really run it for the uh, secondary ability, but mainly for the first ability, which is when plays from hand, look at the top two cards of your deck, put a card from among them in the soul and put the other one on the bottom. So this allows us to do specific soul charge so that we're not randomly soul charging triggers and stuff like that that we want to check. Um, also, we can set up for a lot of greater plays if we know that we can specifically soul charge stuff in the soul. And maybe let's say we have two arenas, we can look at top two, you know, move stuff in. Also, if you happen to ride arena and then you ride over it, let's say that your top three is, um, you know, a silver thorn uh, front trigger and another arena. You can put those two cards in just to draw a card if your hand is looking pretty trash or bad and you need ways to dig a little deeper through your deck in the early game. Um, moving on, we have our starter, which is Silverthorn Assistant Inolia. Um, Inolia, Inolia. Um, it's just our draw card starter. And then uh, running into our triggers, we have four front triggers, eight draws um, to increase the consistency of seeing our pieces, but also for Carol's Restand, because Carol's Restand says that we have to discard two. So obviously, if we're going to get one drive check every time after the Restand, if we check a draw, we're able to keep Carol alive uh, with its skill for multiple more times than we would normally be able to. 
Um, so obviously four front, eight draw, and four heal. Uh, but with that, we are going to switch right over to the game portion of the video. All right, guys. So we're on the game portion of the video. Uh, we're going to be looking for a match here momentarily. So let's try to do world fight. Pick our deck. And then we're going to be friend matching uh, with a code that is one. All right, guys. So we got into our match here. We are ready to go. So let's get right into this match here. Alright guys, so we're going to go with Rock. Our friend goes with Paper, so he's going first. Um, our hand that we open up is pretty trash, so we're going to put back... We're actually going to put back Chimera and three grade ones and hope to draw a better hand. Uh, so we don't have a grade three, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, but hopefully we get one in the course of uh, the game going on. <coughs> so our opponent's playing Narukami. Uh, he rides Helena, uses his draw starter to draw a card and ends his turn. Um, so we draw for turn, we draw into another heal, which is really unfortunate. It's unfortunate and fortunate at the same time because uh, later we'll be able to use this all the shield against Gauntlet Buster, but we prefer to just use PGs. So we draw into a grade two, uh, we ride Irina, and we just a swing with Irina. Um, he no passes our attack. Uh, we check out Aaron, obviously still not a, um, still not a grade three. So hopefully we can use Aaron's skill next turn to like put a Jill in soul or something like that. Um, so he attacks us for 9. We are going to let that hit just so that we can get counter blast for Aaron skill. Otherwise, I would have uh, just threw down this front trigger to no pass it normally. So we take a damage. And thank goodness it's not a grade 3. So we stand and draw. We draw another Aaron. So we're going to ride Amaranth. Uh, use Irina skill just to look at the top 3. Um, no targets, but none of the stuff that we want either. So we put this uh, draw trigger to bottom, this Chimera, and then uh, Purple Trapezes in that order. And then because we don't know if Amaranth is a Workroid or not, I don't think it is. We're just going to call Aaron and then call another Aaron. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go into battle phase. Um, First, we are going to swing with this rear guard Aaron. Not using the skill. <coughs> Our opponent takes the damage. Hopefully, no damage trigger. All right, no damage trigger. Right on schedule. And then we're going to swing with the other Aaron. Um, the reason is uh, the reason why we're doing this attack order is because we're playing as Narakami, and we don't want our cards to get bound or sniped. Uh, so we draw a front trigger, which is pretty unfortunate, but hopefully it gets us one card deeper into our grade 3. Um, so he does check a front trigger on defensive, so that's unfortunate, but we are going to attack with Amaranth and use Amaranth skill to move Aaron into the soul. Uh, gains 3k, so 12 to Vanguard. He'll probably no guard. Oh, okay, so he's just no passing us. Um, and we check a grade 1. So... I actually don't know how it's possible for us to not have a grade 3 when we were in 12, but even having Chimera at this point would be better than nothing. Um, our opponent rides the Tonic Drill, which is a great play to do here because obviously I don't have a board. So our opponent calls Cho-O. Really good for another restanding rear guard, so attacks uses drill skill to counter boss one and then no discard obviously um so we're going to two to pass that <coughs> sorry for the cough guys like still getting over the flu a little bit here all right so his attack does not pass he checks no triggers 
drill restands. And then he attacks us for 14. We're gonna take it and hope for a damage trigger, specifically a draw. All right, we did not get the damage trigger. And then he attacks for 17. We're gonna no guard that attack. He checks a gauntlet buster, which is super bad for us because we do not need to be dealing with that right now. I'd rather deal with drill for multiple turns than gauntlet buster. Uh, we did hit a draw trigger on defense and we drew into Carol, so nice. We have actually fixed um, our hand and what is going on. So we also have two counter blasts at our dis uh, ex disposal. So let's see what we can do with that. We also just top decked into a Chimera, so that's pretty good. Um, so we're going to go Excel 2 with Carol, draw a card. We drew into Alice, which is really good. So yeah, everything's coming apart. Uh, everything's coming together now. I said everything's coming apart. Uh, so we're going to put in a Chimera in the soul. Shuffle our deck. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to call Chimera here. We're going to call Alice here. Um, we have six cards in the soul. So that's plenty to be able to do what we need to do. And then we are also going to call out Purple Trapezist here. And then we are going to call that a turn. So um, we're going to go into battle phase, swing at his vanguard for 12. He's two passing. Check one, we get a front trigger. That's amazing. That's actually exactly what I wanted. And check two, we get nothing. That's completely fine. So next we're going to attack uh, 17 with our purple trapezist. He does guard, um, he's down to six cards in hand. Um, then we're going to attack for 22. He does guard that as well. We're going to go ahead and use Alice's skill to kind of boss one, soul boss one. So we're gonna soul boss out our starter, move Alice into soul. And call out any card that is not a grade three. So we are actually going to call out Amaranth right here. Uh, Carol's skill is going to go live. So we're going to counter boss one and discard two. And we're going to rewrite Alice because it's our only option. And then we're going to use uh, Alice's skill. To call a workroid out from Soul, um, and we're going to call Aaron, and then we are going to swing with Vanguard for 12. He no guards this one. Uh, we do check another front trigger. That's amazing. All right. Um, so we did that. Uh, we're going to attack for 19 now. Um, use the skill to move Purple Trapezius into Soul. And Purple Trapezius is going to activate itself, um, Soul Blasting itself, and being able to call out a card, which we're going to call out Chimera. So he no guards that attack. And he doesn't hit another damage trigger, so. We're on, a good, we're on a pretty good path to success here. Um, so now we're going to... Uh, hmm. Yeah, now we're going to attack for 12. Um, not using the skill. So he guards with the 10k. Uh, then we are going to swing... For 37, we are going to use the skill this time, so let's Soul Blast out Irina and put the Chimera into the Soul, and we get to counter charge one. So that's dope. We attack for 42. Hopefully, he doesn't hit a damage trigger. Alright, so he does hit a damage trigger in the, in the form of a crit. However, we can still hit, so that's great. 
And then for our last attack, we are going to swing with Aaron. And obviously we can't use Aaron's skill because we need a Workroid on our board, which we do not have. However, our hand is pretty set up. We have a uh, Draw Trigger PG and our hand's dope. However, he's about to ride Gauntlet Buster and get rid of our whole front row, so that's unfortunate. However, we did manage to put him to five, so we put him in, in, a, in a tough scenario, so to speak. So he go ahead. He, he does the go ahead for the Gauntlet Buster, getting rid of our front row, and he's uh, calling back his Rising Phoenixes now. Calls one to an Excel two circle. Calls another one, probably behind Vanguard. Okay, he's calling it to front row. Maybe he's just counting on getting a trigger. I think he only had two birds in drop, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so he's going to battle phase. Um, he's going to end up swinging uh, first with 14, which we are going to eat that. Um, we do not get a trigger. Uh, he swings with Vanguard. We are going to PG and drop one of our 15k shield because we really want to keep the jumping drill. Drive check one, nothing. Drive check two, nothing. So that's really good for us. And then I think he's gonna restand Cho'o and we're gonna take uh, whatever attack attacks next and hope that we get a draw trigger and we get a card. Um, so let's go ahead and take that. No guard. No guard. Alright, no trigger. That's unfortunate, but we're not really in a situation that to lose. So we're gonna go ahead and guard with this front trigger right here, and the other Phoenix cannot hit us. So hopefully if we top deck any grade three that's Alice or Carol, that would be good, but we actually didn't do that. So um, what we're going to do instead is bypass the ride phase and then we are going to call out jumping jill and call out beverly on the other excel circle and we're just going to attack because that's all we can do literally if our if our opponent was playing any excel deck uh besides kumo or narukami this would be way better of a matchup um or if we just had another Carol to be able to do shenanigans. Uh, so we do check another uh, draw trigger. That's really good for us, actually. Because um, we're going to be PGing Gauntlet Buster again the next turn. And we're also draining cards from his hand, and we drained his intercept as well. So we attack for 14. And then we attack for 22, which he has to give us two cards for, um, I would assume. Okay, yep, so he's giving us two cards in the form of a PG. <coughs> he's probably gonna drop the Demolition Dragon. Oh, he dropped another PG. I didn't even know that he had two PGs in his hand. Okay, so he kept the Demolition Dragon. So, best case scenario, he's gonna draw for turn. Um, he's gonna use Gauntlet Buster skill, which leaves him with one card in hand, and he's gonna play the one card. And then we finish him next turn. Oh wow, he must have just top decked a Gauntlet Buster just now. So he rides a Gauntlet Buster, gets another card. So our opponent's thinking here. And this is what I love about facing Narukami. It's like, even if they are, you know, the Excel Killer deck and uh, they're going after you with max uh, lethality and max force, it's very hard for them to actually um, 
put up advantage because they have to keep discarding for Gauntlet Buster. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but it does catch up with you, um, especially if you're facing uh, pressure from another Excel deck. So um, our opponent attacks for 32. Obviously, we're going to PG that, dropping our 5k. And unless he checks a heal, I'm pretty sure we survive and kill this turn with uh, ease. Oh, so he does take a, check a heal. So that's actually pretty bad for us. Because we just went from a guaranteed death to not as guaranteed. So now he attacks for 13. We block with a front trigger. And then he attacks for 23, and we block with a heal trigger. So hopefully we top deck any good at attack type card or a grade 3. Um, so we top deck a Beverly, not really a good attack type card, but we're still going to go for the win anyways to see if we can. And hope that he doesn't hit a damage trigger, because if he does, it's all over for us. Uh, but we're going to attack for 12. No guard. Check one. No trigger. Check two. No trigger. So hopefully he just doesn't hit a damage trigger. Please. Okay, no damage trigger. Um, I think, however, he can still block us. Yeah, because he has a Rising Phoenix and a heal. Yeah, unfortunately the heal is what we needed not to happen um, in order for us to be able to kill or for us to top deck anything of actual value. That would have been great as well. So he's probably going to use Gauntlet Buster skill. Yep, get rid of our board. And he's probably going to call back a Rising Phoenix that he guarded with last turn. Yep. Okay, so the only way out of this really that I can see is if we guard Gauntlet Buster for a one to pass, he doesn't hit any triggers, and then we six damage heal. That's the only way I can see us living this. So we one to pass, check one, nothing. Check two, nothing. Okay, so part step one of our of our plan is complete. Now we just need a six damage heal, but can we do it? All right, boys, here we go. No guard. Ah, oh, we didn't get it. Ah, oh, man, that's unfortunate. Well, guys, we lost that one uh, mainly because we didn't see another Carol in the game, but. Deck is obviously, uh, that's like one of its weaknesses, is if it doesn't get the three that it needs to get, um, you know, it becomes kind of meh. And then also we were fighting our Akami at the same time, which is a terrible matchup for Excel. So just the fact that we were able to do uh, that good is like a testament to how strong the deck is. Uh, so we are going to go with Rock again this time. This time our opponent picks uh, Scissors. We're going to put one card back because our hand is actually kind of decent this time around. Uh, so now we're playing against Aqua Force, another Excel deck, but not a control deck, so very good. Uh, we're going to draw off of our starter. And then we are going to end our turn. Our opponent draws for turn, rides Wheel Assault draws a card off the starter and probably just attacks us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and block that this time early because I know Glory Maelstrom comes later and a bunch of high powered attacks and we really don't want to uh, have to do that just because we're not running a lot of one card blocks that are strong. Um, so we're going to ride, uh, use a, a arena skill. Uh, no targets, uh, just going to put the draw trigger and then Alice and Beverly to the bottom. And then we are going to 
call Aaron. Call Beverly behind Vanguard Circle. And then we're going to go ahead and go in for the attack. 16. No guard. Uh, we do drive check a Carol. That's freaking bomb. And he hits no damage trigger. And his damage is glory. So that's good. One glory out of the deck. Alright, so we're looking pretty set up. Pretty good right here. It depends on how much damage he does to us next turn. Um, with what we can really do, basically. Oh, so he actually rides Coral Assault. So I don't think his hand is that good. Because if it was, he would have rode Algos. Alright, so he calls Tidal. And then he goes into Battle Phase. He attacks our Vanguard for 9. He uses his skill, Soul Blast 1 to restand. Uh, we are going to take that with pleasure. Uh, we do not hit a damage trigger. Uh, Tidal Assault attacks again into our Vanguard. We no guard. Damage check again, no trigger. And Vanguard attacks. He checks no trigger. And we check no trigger. Alright guys, so he has 7 cards in his hand, but we should be able to get a decent amount of stuff done this turn. Um, so we're going to ride Carol first of all. Excel 2, draw a card. Uh, let's use Carol still first. Look at top 5. There's another Carol, that's amazing. Uh, we're not going to use the skill to call. Uh, but we are going to use Beverly. Beverly will give plus 5 to the Vanguard. So now we're all set up to do uh, some good damage. Uh, we're going to call Alice and then call Chimera. Alright, so we don't have anything really that we want to use the full extent. So what we're going to do is not play anything else. Uh, we're going to attack Vanguard. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and use... Oh, uh, actually... Guys, I messed up. Oh, no, guys, I messed up. I was supposed to attack with Vanguard first. But, uh... Yeah, let's just attack and not use skill. I totally messed that up. Okay, so Vanguard attacks, 24. Check one, heal trigger. Ah, oh, man, I should use the skill then. That's wild. Alright, so we heal the damage. Uh, power to Chimera, I guess. Oh, we double heal. That super sucks. Oh, man. Okay. Um... Well then, that's a thing. Uh, that's not really good at all for us. Um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to swing with Alice. Ah, uh, yes, I know exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to swing with Alice. We're going to use Alice's skill to counter blast one, soul blast one, putting it into the soul. And then we're going to call out Jumping Jill. Uh, Jumping Jill is going to use its skill to put Aaron into the soul. And then we are going to call Alice out. To the back rear guard circle. Uh, attack for 14. That's why I like this deck because the way that you can do the plays, it's so fluid that like even if you mess up, you probably have a still, still a route to get to what you want to get to. Um, so we're going to use the skill of Chimera, Soul Blast, and put Alice in the Soul. And we counter charge, allowing Carol's skill to activate. So we're going to counter blast one. And drop two cards. 
Uh, let's drop this draw on this heal. And then we're gonna re-ride Carol from Soul. XL2, we draw a card. Uh, Carol skill activates top five. We do get an Alice that's broken. So this time we're able to call the Alice out. Beverly activates giving 5k to Vanguard. And then the attack of 27 is still happening right now. So he no guards. He does not hit a trigger. Very good for us. We attack for 17. Uh, we do not hit a damage trigger. And then we attack for 17. Alright, so we force our opponent down to three cards in hand. And we're pretty set up for the next turn. Depends on what he does right here. So he rides a uh, regular Maelstrom. XL2 draws a card. Alright, so he calls Riptide Dragon. That's very strong. Calls another Maelstrom. Uses Maelstrom's Counter Blast 1 to give plus 3 to front row. Um, attacks Vanguard for 12. Using the skill to Soul Blast 1 to restand. Uh, we are going to take that. Damage check, no damage, or no damage uh, trigger. Uh, Vanguard attacks us for 15, we no guard. Check one, Penguin. Check two, PG draw. Very good. He has the power to Riptide, probably in hopes that it's going to hit uh, for the restand. Damage check, Purple Trapezist. Uh, we get attacked by Vanguard for 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to intercept with this Jill that's on our board. And then we get attacked by Riptide Dragon. It gets plus 20, so it's 50k. Um, what we're going to do is PG that. And then he has one last attack in the form of Maelstrom. He's probably going to attack Alice. Or Chimera. Hopefully he attacks Chimera. Oh, okay, so he attacks Alice. Um, We are going to... Probably just let that Alice go. I don't think it's too hurtful to lose that Alice. Uh, stand and draw, so we're gonna bypass the ride phase. We are going to call out Chimera here. Um, call out Beverly here. And then we are just going to swing at Vanguard. For 19. No guard. Check one front trigger, that's amazing. Probably just sealed the game actually. Check two is another Carol. Damage check, no trigger. Yeah, that probably definitely just sealed the game. Um, so we are going to attack for 22. No skill. He blocks us with uh, front trigger. Attack for 22 again, no skill. Alright, so he guards and intercepts. Now we attack with um, Chimera using Chimera skill. Soul Blast out Aaron, and we're going to put the other Chimera into the soul. Therefore, triggering Carol's skill. Um, Carol's going to activate Counter Boss 1, discard 2. And then we're going to rewrite the Carol. 
getting the Excel marker, drawing a card, and then using Carol Skill to top five. Um, I guess let's put a Beverly in. Well, no, let's just put a Purple Trapezius in. Um, then we use Beverly Seal to get 5k to Vanguard. So we attack for 32. He has to give us two cards. PG. And I assume he's going to block my final attack with a grade one or something like that. For a one to pass. Oh wow, he's just no guards. Uh, so we check no trigger, and let's see his damage check. Draw trigger, but that is not a heal. Uh, so we win the game. Like I said, guys, this deck is like very good heavy rush down deck, and that was like a great showcase of it. Obviously, we really messed up with uh, not attacking with that Aaron um, and using the skill. But uh, obviously, after that, we double double healed, so. It was kind of a scenario of like, oh, did we even care about doing that in the first place? Because we just ended up healing anyways. Alright, so we got another good hand. Uh, we put one back and we drew a trigger. So we're playing against uh, Spike Brothers now, which is uh, our friend's main clan. So this should actually be a really good match. Um, he's also going first, so maybe kind of a bad match for us because we're playing Excel. This deck uh, is really kind of like meh, going second against uh, Force Clans. So we ride Arena, draw a card. And then we are going to attack for eight. Uh, draw check a purple trapezes that can be useful for later. Alright, so he rides, uh, I think this card's called full bat. Counterboss one, put a card into soul, top two, and then he may call either one of them or both or none to the board if he wishes, and the rest go to bottom. Oh wow, so that's two really good calls. He gets Juggernaut Maximum and uh, whatever this card is called. I just know it's the Punt card that you Soul Blast 1, he gets 2k on boost, and then it draws the card at the end of the battle, and he goes back to the bottom of the deck. He uses skill, Soul Blast 1, uh, it's 20k, that's way too big for my taste, so that's a no guard. Uh, he gets his main grade 3. We do get a draw trigger, that's pretty lit. Um, draw trigger, power to vanguard, and we draw a card. And then he gets to put his grade one to bottom and draw another card himself. And then he attacks us for 23, which ironically is another number because uh, we would like to use this 5k to block it, but uh, we cannot, So, and we want to keep the other cards in our hand, so we're gonna no guard. Uh, damage check our last arena so all our arenas are out now so we stand and draw uh, we drew into Alice that's pretty good um, let's go ahead and ride our jumping Jill using the skill of Irina top three no targets uh, we're gonna put this this and this at the bottom in that order and then we are actually going to call purple trap pieces here and we want more damage from him before we explode next turn and try to do like a semi kill turn so we are just going to leave it there and then attack vanguard for 16 no guard uh, we do get a front trigger man that sucks what a waste especially because we only have four in the deck um, he does damage one of his main grade threes so I'm happy about that so he draws for turn. Uh, he actually rides Siegfried, which is interesting. Um, goes Force 1. Uh, 
Uh, he uses Siegfried skill, so I think he chose to bypass the main phase skill of Juggernaut Maximum because he's gonna use Siegfried anyways. Juggernaut Maximum gets another 10 from its own ability. And then he calls another Juggernaut Maximum. Man, wow, Juggernaut Maximums are in there for days, boys. All right, so he attacks us for 33. We no guard, hopefully we get a trigger. All right, we do get a front trigger. Not a complete waste. Um, I'm also gonna no guard his Vanguard, even though I know that it has a very powerful on hit skill. Um, just because I don't wanna deal with this much power in the early game. It doesn't really matter if we lose that Trapezius that's behind Vanguard. Also, we're giving ourselves the chance to check more draw triggers on defensive. Yep, like that just happened. So he's gonna use the skill of Siegfried. Soul Blast 2. Also, the lower soul the Spike Brother player has, the better for us because later it means he's able to use less of those really good skills. Um, so we're gonna guard this with a 5k. And then we're gonna guard the other attack with a 5k as well. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, so we draw for turn, we draw into a draw trigger PG. That's gonna be useful for us in this matchup. Um, we're gonna ride Carol, go Excel 2. Hopefully off of Carol's top five, we get another Carol so we can be a business. And we do not. However, we do get a Chimera, so Let's shove that Chimera in the soul. Um, and let's go ahead and call Alice. Um, another Alice. Amaranth. Um, Irina, Irina skill, top two. We put an Alice in there. That's cool. I was hoping that one of them was a Carol. But that's okay, I guess. And we're just gonna make a full board because why not? I'm trying to kill. <laughs> trying to slide into them DMs. Hopefully he doesn't check a damage trigger because that would completely ruin us in every way, shape, and form. Uh, we check a Chimera and a Beverly, which is not helpful at all. Please, no damage trigger. Alright, no damage trigger. Um. Next, we are going to attack for 17 to Vanguard. Alright, so he blocks that. Uh, we use the skill of Alice, kind of boss one. Soul Bloss one. And then we call out Jumping Jill. Jumping Jill, uh, we're gonna use Carol first. Counter boss one and discard two. Uh, we're probably gonna need these cards in this matchup, so let's go ahead and discard. Well, worst case scenario, I'll just use the PG to discard the Chimera if we're in real, real danger. So let's discard those two. Um, Alice, we're gonna ride Alice. Imaginary gift two. Uh, we're gonna use jumping jail skill to move Trapezius into the soul. And we're going to call out Irina. Um, and then we're gonna use Alice's skill. Call out another Alice. It gets plus 5,000. And then we're not gonna use purple Trapezius. So let's try this again. Attack for 20, hopefully we get a trigger. Oh, we got a Carol. That's unfortunate. Um, next we're gonna attack for 14. Please no damage trigger. All right, cool, we're actually in business. He's at five now with no damage power. So he has eight cards in hand. 
Uh, we have two PGs, which means next turn we can take an attack and PG two attacks um, to survive. So let's look at our soul. Only card that we would be able to call out. Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to attack for 20. Um, he guards. We are going to use Alice's ability. Counter blast one. Um, let's actually. We're not going to use Alice's ability because, yeah, there would be no real point to doing that. Um, what we are going to do, though, is we are going to. Oh, yes, this is perfect. So we're going to attack with Amaranth, move Jumping Jill into Soul. Attack for 19. Uh, he guards for 23. And then now we're going to attack with Alice. He guards. And then we get two more attacks, I believe, because we're going to Alice, uh, Counter Blast. We are going to Soul Blast out the Purple Trapezist. Uh, we're going to call out Jumping Jill. Jumping Jill still is going to move this trapezist in to soul. And we're going to call out nothing. Oh, we have to call out one. I forgot about that. Okay, so we're going to call out Chimera here. And then we're going to use purple trapezist skill to call out Alice back. So we're going to attack for 14. And then we are going to attack for 17. Alright, and I don't think there's any point to using Alice skill. Yeah, there's no point, so... We're just going to not use Alice skill and call it a turn. So our opponent draws now. Probably going to ride uh, Bulldozer, or Bulldoze, whatever that card is. Yeah. I'm going to get Force, as expected. So we know because we're fighting Spike Brothers that they hit for really big, but the max amount of attacks that they can do in a turn is 3, which means that our hand is perfect to guard it, so we will survive no matter what. Um, as long as he doesn't heal, we can just do a play where we just attack him at 5 damage next turn, and I believe that closes us out the game. That's how I'm seeing it in my future Psych Psychwalia, I guess. Um, so he attacks with Vanguard. Uh, we're going to PG. Dropping Chimera. Check one. Check two, critical trigger. Okay, I'm perfectly fine with that because it's not a heal. <coughs> so he makes that Juggernaut go up in power. And then he's going to draw a card and make us retire one of our per people. He gets rid of one of our inter interceptors. Um, he attacks for two crit for 28. Then he uses the skill Soul Blast 1 move mo both force markers. So it's going to end up being 48 with two crit. PG that. Dropping Carol. And since the last attack has no crit, it would not kill us anyways. So he's either going to attack Vanguard or attack a Rearguard. And either way is completely fine. Yep, so he attacks our Rearguard Alice. We're going to let it go. Turn end. 
Uh, let's see what we draw. We drew a jumping Jill. Um, all right, nothing much, but what to call uh, jumping Jill? And then we are going to call. I want to say we have one soul. So if we soul blast one out, put one card in, that makes one soul. This makes two soul. Um, but Chimera can hit and Amaranth can't, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna attack for 12, or sorry, uh, 20. So he guards for a one to pass. We hit a draw trigger. Power to Vanguard. Drive check two, we hit a heal trigger. Uh, we are going to heal and uh, put the power here in case he six damage heals. Or sorry, we don't heal, sorry guys, but the attack does pass and that's the game. I swear this deck is way too powerful when um, your opponent's at five damage. I've said it over and over and over again, but this deck becomes one of the strongest decks in the game when your opponent's at five damage, and it's unbelievable. Uh, but with that being said, that has been the future fight uh, for the um, Nightmare Doll uh, Phantasmal Steed deck. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of a change of pace and the video in general. If you guys did, be sure to leave a like on the video, comment down below letting me know what your thoughts of it, and be sure to check out all the stuff down in our description as well um, for things outside of the channel. But with that being said, this this has been Josh, and you guys have an amazing day. Peace, guys.